Hello and welcome back to AEW TEW 2020. And of course, last week we are now coming off of the surprise pay per view that we had. If you do not know what I'm talking about, make sure you go back and check out the last episode, the playlist down in the description down below. But we are now on the move towards AEW Sunrise, which is going to be our equivalent of the anniversary show that is going on in real life, which is going to be happening on week one or two of October. I'm not sure which one right now. But let's get on and book AEW Dark. So, of course, we need to get things started with booking this Jack Evans and Angelico feud. So, today, I think actually I'm going to do a tag team match. I think it's probably going to be good. We're going to team them up. We're going to do a, not, not team them up in the slightest. <laughs> We're going to put them against each other on opposite sides. So, Angelico and see what faces we have to go with. Not tag singles, you please. Um, just men. Let's have a look who we have who could team up with Angelico for this. Pillman, maybe. Oh, he's about to be who is L. Lindemann. I have no idea who this man is, and there's a good reason for that. Um, without being rude to the poor man. I don't mean to be rude to him. Um, it would be good to team up with him. I might team up Seidel. I don't think that's absolutely exciting. Let's put Janela in there. Let's put Janela in there. So we'll do Janela and Angelico versus Jack Evans. Why has he already got... I don't know, because he was... He, yeah. No, it does make sense. But I was going to be very annoyed then that he had cool momentum. It's not okay. So it's Jack Evans and... See, I'm tempted to put Kingston in there, but I, but I don't want Kingston to lose. Because actually, Kingston's doing very well. Actually, see, has more momentum. Let's put Kingston in there. We can take the loss in this one. Give Angelico the win. I should know. Janela should probably get the win, really. Because Janela's the one who has the most pop in this match. So we'll give Joe Janela a win. And then next week we'll do we'll do um Janela and Eddie Kingston and give Kingston the win. And we'll let Janela pin Kingston in this match. But we'll bring it back around in the future. Um let's give Give Evans a promo. I can't remember how well he does in promos. Let's give him a promo on. Let's just um. Let's just give him a rant. Let's give him a rant against. I should know. Let's give him no. Let's just do a generic singles because I don't want him to um bring Angelico and his own popularity. They're over in a sense. This won't exactly help. Evans do a promo. We will have. We need to continue the Kip Sabian story. So, let's have a one-on-one -on -one match. Kip taking on... Um, who should he take on? I don't think I'm going to put against a member of SCU this week. Because I kind of... Unless I have one of them win. Let's have Kip versus Scorpio. But I'm actually going to give Scorpio the win this week. And then we'll build that to the rematch. And it's going to be a um, flash pinfall finish as the key kip still a bit strong after that. Going to have a match for my women's division on the cards, obviously. Let's go and have... Hmm, let's have a triple threat match. So let's put in... Let's go into females. So we'll have some new people coming in very shortly. We have made some new signings. But they are not here just yet. Um, let's put Tay in there. Even though Tay's gonna he's gonna drag the match down a bit, but let's put Tay in there. Tay. Um, what face should I add in there? They got Ishida. We're not putting Ishida in there. Strangely enough, that's not a good idea. Might put Statlander in and give Statlander the win. Yeah, let's give Statlander a win. Chris Statlander and... 
someone else who has decent momentum. Let's put Abaddon in there, as it is. And we'll give Chris Salant the Salant of the win, making a sure match. Um, the crowd won't be happy about seeing this one at all, but we need to build them up. Otherwise, you're not going to have a women's division. Let's pin Abaddon. And then let's have one more match. We'll have an opening match, have a tag team contest open up dark. Um, let's do... Um, probably... I, I misread the purple, the red to the bottom. I got confused for a second. See so Jurassic Express. Let's get put them in a match against tag team, please. Heels. I haven't really got any weak heels. It would be Reynolds and Silver, which I don't really want to do. Let's just do. Let's just put them against two dudes. That's Colt. Colt needs to turn, so I'll tuck him in there. Do Colt Cabana and... Oh no, I do the Blade and the Butcher. Why aren't the... Oh, he's injured, that's why. I was going to say, I was wondering why the Blade and the Butcher weren't an option, but he is injured currently. So, Colt Cabana can team up with... Honestly, <laughs> Dr. Luther. Whatever. This is just a match to get the Jungle Jet Jurassic Express a win. To get Jungle Boy a win, apparently, as I just said. Cock of needs to turn face anyway. There's no point of having having him as a heel. And let's add in the quick promo. Um It's gonna be a hype we're gonna have a hype video for Sammy Callahan, who of course is has made his debut here last week on AW Dynamite. Let's start the show. 44 for this one. Um, Cole Cabana actually did the best in the match. Interesting. That's weird. I didn't expect him to see the best in the match. Luchasaurus 38. Luch Jungle Boy 41. Yeah, well, Jungle Boy getting the win. So, And Luther was rubbish. As expected. No offence, Luther. But, yeah. Cool. Nothing, nothing interesting. Whatever. 41. 26 for this match. <laughs> e okay. It's fine. It's fine. Abaddon 35, Statland to 36, take on to 30. It's not bad. It's not a bad match at all. It's just they don't want to see it not on the pre-show. But they need to get some kind of... They need to get some matches, otherwise this is all going to fall apart. 51 for Sabian and Scorpio. Scorpio getting the roll-up over, over Kip Sabian. 47 for Sabian is really nice. And a 55 for Scorpio Sky. Yeah, no issues. They're just holding back, apparently. A Jack Evans promo we've got 56 has boosted the the um, feud, which is always nice. And then main event, 55. Joe Dalla, 55. Angelica, 47. Eddie Kingston, 52. And Jack Evans, 55 as well. Very nice. Jack Evans and Eddie Kingston showed excellent chemistry teaming together. Interesting. We're going to have to keep that in mind. Maybe we'll do something with that in the future. Hmm. Very interesting indeed. But now let's go and move ourselves forward to Dynamite. From which of course, last week our main event was Pack and Jericho defeating John Moxley and Will Ospreay, which was kind of because we didn't really have a main event for the show, to be honest. But let's have a look at our storylines. How we're doing with our storylines? Alan and Cage could really use some more heat, to be honest. It's a bit of a shame that that's so low. 6-7. It's had some really strong segments, but also some really weak segments, which is a bit of a shame. Cody and MJF. Just need to keep building this. It hasn't really been building that much for the actual MJF stuff so far. Especially if we want to do this much at the pay-per-view in like a week or two weeks. We need to continue to build this quite quickly. This has kind of died a bit because I haven't, this hasn't advanced in a while. I don't think. Yeah, I don't know what I'm doing with this particularly. I'm not entirely sure on that one. Maybe we do Flip versus Hager. Maybe that's where we go for the pay-per-view. I'm not sure. Kip and SCU is doing alright, as you would expect for a dark storyline. Well, this is 
this is now dead because I haven't used it. Let's just delete that story. Because I can't do what I wanted to do with it. So Lance Arch is kind of having issues now. The Miro hasn't been able to debut. Um, Pac and Moxley is in a good place. But obviously it's not going to be Pac versus Moxley. It's going to be Moxley versus Sunny Callahan And Pac versus Will Ospreay is where we're going to for the pay-per-view. But both of those matches should be able to help build everything on push it all up. Um, tag team division. We need to do some building for that on this show desperately. Because it hasn't really had any particular... It hasn't had too much build recently. So it doesn't need to be continued to be built. Um, I'm not sure what team we're going to go with as the contenders. I think it'll be... F I guess it'll be FTR. Or with the team that we go to for the contenders. Going into the pay-per-view. TH2. Yeah, that's... It's doing fine. It's doing as it would do. Uncaged. Ugh. Oh, uncaged. Oh, uncaged. The women's title for you is doing all right. So we need to get some more heat behind these storylines. We are a bit lacking in our heat department. So, so I need to give Sammy a big win tonight. That seems very important. Since he's debuted and he needs to get himself in a position where he can go and face Moxley. Obviously, like, he is in a position. He is already in a position where he can go and do that. But you know what I mean? He needs to be built up a bit more so that people believe that he can beat Moxley. Otherwise, this will all be a bit pointless. Mm. <laughs> I always put people against Dustin. Dustin's always my go-to because of the brawl. And I think that's what's going to happen again. Or oh, it could be Hangman, but Hangman has cool momentum. I don't really want to give Hangman another loss. He kind of needs the win. Yeah, I think we do Dustin again. Not that we've done it with Sammy, but I think we do Dustin and Sammy because Sammy is good at his brawl. Yeah. Which is why I wanted him for Mox as well. What's her name? Sammy Callahan's going to get the win. And he is going to... It's going to be a wild brawl and Sammy's going to dominate. I feel bad for Dustin. <laughs> but he's going to dominate Dustin. He's going to be pretty quick and he's going to absolutely wreck him. It's going to be eight minutes for that one. Sammy Callahan mainly just playing with Dustin. And then post-match we'll have... Um, Moxley's going to come out and save... Dustin from being attacked by Sammy Callahan, And hopefully that won't be dreadful. Like with John Moxley's overness, that should be really good. Hopefully. Touch wood. Fingers crossed. We'll see though. Um, we'll give a promo. Moxley will have a um a taunt backstage against Sammy. So we need to do some tag team stuff. It's very important. So let's go and give. We need to give FTR a big win here tonight, so they're in a position to be able to go forward to that um match against the Lucha Brothers. So let's give them a victory over Santana and Ortiz. I think it's probably the best one because they're already in the storyline so it'll be easier to do that. Let me just check that they've got um, they're happy and they got all momentum. Yes they do. So that'll be fine. We can do this one. Let's go and give them a little bit of time. Let's give them 16 minutes and then we'll give, we'll give Dax the win. Dax can pick up the victory over Ortiz and it's going to be a storytelling match. So we need to have um, we'll have a promo from Pack. Pack is going to cut a promo on Will Ospreay. After Will Ospreay has a match here tonight, Will is going to go up against. Well, look who's got, who's in the heel department here. That I can have him up against. Um. Who can take a loss without any particular issues? Um, let's work a window with Zach. Be a good match. Obviously, these two are both great. But, yeah, we'll also break and get the win there, and then pack and cut the promo afterwards. So, we need to do... Gonna have... 
the match to make MJF look good. This is really just a build for the paper. This is really just a build people up show. This one, to be honest. We need to get MJF looking good before he faces off against Cody. So let's go and put him against... I'm going with Cassidy. Yeah, I think Cassidy is a good shout. Two with Cassidy. Uh, I was only going to be short. It's not, there's no need for too much in this one. MJF gets the victory. And then post-match, he is going to challenge. Challenge Cody. Give it five minutes. The MJF should be able to be great in that one, you would expect. And we need a main event for the night. So our main event... Um, let me have a look who's not being used yet in our main event stuff. Probably something to do with the young cage story is going to be the best thing. Maybe we do a big six man. No, I don't think we've done this already. No, we haven't because we were saving it. I think we do a big six. I think we do a big six man. We'll do Kenny. Matt, Nick, versus Mike Bennett, Roy Gallows, and Carl Anderson. We're going to give the elite guys the win. Make it, I'll just make it 15 minutes. Kenny Omega can get the victory over Carl and over Luke Gallows. Because Lou Gallows is the one no one wants to see for some reason. Or we'll make it so that it's um outside interference finished. So Carl Anderson is going to be interfered against by Hangman. Hangman's going to even the odds to allow the Elite to pick up the victory in the main event here tonight. And then we will have... So we have a women's segment. We also need to have a steal the show match. So our women. Hikaru Shida. What we, let me just say what we've been doing. I don't think we've done anything really since. Yeah. Nothing particularly. Interesting. Tess has kind of. Tess has been on the team to beat the champion twice now. So it's Thunder Rosa. So we need to give Kata Shida a win, because she has kind of been on the losing end a lot recently, I think is what we need to do. Um, Kata Shida. Let's give her a, we'll give her a defence here tonight for her AEW Women's Championship. Um, let's whack her against the heel who has... Maybe I'll whack her against Tennille. I know people don't want to see Tennille, but I think that's probably the best we can do. And let's just make it Let's give it 10 minutes, Tino Dashwood, and um, Hikaru Shida, Women's World. And let's give Hikaru Shida the victory here. Then we want to have, and I think for our opening contest, we'll have Jeff Cobb and Jake Hager. And so I still got, I still haven't got to steal the show. I'll either steal the show match. Hmm. Let's do a four-way tag team match. This is going to be a weird one. Let's do Penta, Ray, Ricky Starks, Brian Cage. Um, Dragon Lee, Darby, and... Um, Jake Hager, Jeff Cobb and Jake Hager in a big four-way match. Let's have that be our opening match for the night. And we're going to put it as Steal the Show and we're going to see if it, how it goes. And then we're going to have um, Dragon Lee is going to get the victory because 
He's just debuted. He kind of needs this victory. He's going to get the victory over Starks. Continuing to build towards their inevitable clash. And also while keeping the tag team champions strong. And while keeping the inner circle strong. Yeah, I'm happy with that. Uh, no, 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 no. No tag team championships on the line in that one, please. And I think I'm happy with that. I might just move this a bit further into the show. Let's move this over here after the Moxley taunts Callahan. Yeah, I'm happy with that. I'm, um, this is back on a pre-show. Back on a pre-show match as well. We'll put it on a pre-show. Let's have some more um, women in action on a pre-show. Let's have a one-on-one -on -one match. And let's do another tag team match because they're doing... I'm, enjoyed, I'm enjoying doing Thunder Rosa and um, Tessa teaming up. Because it's hopefully going to give some more um, credence to Thunder Rosa as well. Unless Wacko had them in there against Riho and... Uh, has anyone else got... All our faces have got bad momentum. Um, Let's do Chris. We gave Chris the win on Dark. I know this is going to kind of ruin our pop a bit, but... Not a pop of momentum, but it is on the pre-show, so it might be fine. It kind of depends. We'll give Tessa the win. Over Statlander. And we'll also have a pre-show match. Just because I want to test a bit more. I want to test that Jack Evans, Eddie Kingston team. Because if they like, if they work well together, then I would like to do something with that. See if I, put, if I put them against an actual team. Um, faces to please. Against private party, who are both irritated, apparently. Yeah, let's move against private party and see how they do. We'll give um, we'll give Eddie the win. Eddie can pick up the big victory in this one over Mark Quinn. Now this will be our pre-show matches going into the show, and I am happy with that. So let's get the show started here tonight. Oh, a sixty-four. Oh, very nice. Okay, yeah. We need to do something with these two as a team. Maybe a few, and a few with these guys would be really nice, actually. This is a lot better than I was expecting. A 64 for this. Eddie Kingston with a 56. Evans with a 63, best in the match. And Isaiah Castillo and Mark Quinn, 59-60. I think we should make we should do a few with these guys. I think... I'm just going to... I'm going to set... I'm not going to... Let me return to the booking screen just for a second. I'm going to add this storyline now. We won't use it just yet. CP versus EK and and JE, whatever I decide to call them. I'll just whack um, Isaiah Castillo and Mark Willen here for now, just so I remember to do this. So I do think that's going to be a very nice storyline to have. Right, let's go back to the booking. 56 for these guys, mainly because of Tessa, obviously. Tessa really brings it up. But Thunder Rhodes with a 42. By putting it, I, you know, we lost some pop in the actual women's title, sorry. Unfortunately. Some heat, not pop. But, yeah, putting Thunder Rhodes in there with Tessa's really working in terms of building up her popularity, which is really nice. Chris Allen with 39. Rehab with a 45. I'm happy with that. It's a bit shame about taking the storyline down, but I'm happy with how that goes. And now let's move forward into Dynamite with our opening contest here on dynamite an 80 great i'm glad that worked i was worried that wasn't going to work out oh my goodness so dragon lee and darby allen managed to get the victory in this four corners tag team match being able to it wasn't elimination like they're saying it wasn't elimination they didn't pin the lucha brothers that's not happening but it was just a regular one but um Darby Allen and Dragon Lee got the victory here over Ricky Starks and then Brian Cage being very unhappy after the bell rings, being distracted on the outside while fighting with Jeff Cobb and Jake Hager. 
not allowing him to be there to break up the pinfall. So 88 from Ray Phoenix. My word. That's so good. 77 Pentagon. Brian Cage 65. I'm happy with that. But like Starks was the weakest, but 47 is good for what pop he has. And it's good for him to keep on building up. Um, Alan 83. Dragon Lee 74. And then Hager and Jeff Cobb 58 and 67. I'm really happy with that. And we should put Cape, Cobb and Hager together as a team. I know then there's two teams in the inner circle. But I think... I'm pretty. I think we should do that. That's two big, big horses. They're gonna like team up together. I would like that. I think that's a good idea. But eighty overall. That's a very, very good start to the show. Oh, Cassidy and MJF have no chemistry. Okay. Well, I'm glad that we didn't try and do anything proper with that. It's a shame. That's really a shame. Fifty-four overall for that. That's bad. Fifty from MJF. That does not show what he can do. That concerns me. We need to give him another match next week to go and see whether he actually can hold himself as a singles competitor because there's no way. We're not putting the TNT title anywhere near him, Jeff. He's only going to get a 50 performance. And I know there's no chemistry in this, so it's not fair to what he would get. But if he can only get a 50 performance, 55 performance, we can't put that TNT title on him. We just can't do it. Cody can carry people to good matches. If MJF can't, then we can't put him. We can't put him in that position. For the promo, though, eighty-seven for the promo. My word, he breaks my heart, and then he remends it with the promo. Very, very nice stuff there, and I'm very glad Cody was not a ringside for that match. For the promo, superb, superb stuff. Zack Saber Jr. and Will Ospreay, they have great chemistry, as you'd expect between these two. Seventy-six overall. 82 and a 77. I probably should have put Pack or Ringside for this. Oh well. But that's really nice. Good big win for Will Ospreay. And hopefully, and we'll start using Zach properly eventually. This has not really got a position on the card to be in just yet. 86 for the promo. Lovely, lovely stuff there from Pack. Lovely stuff indeed. 69 for this tag team match. That's really good. It lost heat, sadly. The tag storyline. That's a bit weird. That's it. I'm surprised they got such a high high score getting 69. But these guys getting 62, 61, 63, 62. It's good stuff. Very good stuff. At least they're all on the same kind of level, so I'm not doing any damage to anyone with this match. Yeah, happy with that one. And now FTR will be moving forward to go and face the Lucha Brothers at AEW Sunrise for those tag titles, which I'm sure is going to be a great match, mainly because of the Lucha Brothers. John Moxley with 84. John Moxley's cut the worst promo of the night. Somehow. <laughs> Which is interesting. I guess it's actually true. It's a bit surprising for the game for him to have a, have a worse promo. John Moxley was very poor in trying to improvise dialogue for some reason. Fair enough. Not really true in the slightest. But hey ho. Then 84 is still not too bad. Let's move forward to the next one. Neil Dashwood and Hikaru Shida, 51. Can't complain. It's better than what you would expect from these guys. 41, 44, I mean, and then a 45. It's not too bad at all. Honestly, it's not too bad. I'm just glad to give Hikaru Shida a win. She kind of needs it. So, yeah, at least it's not taking things down too badly. And then Callahan and Dustin Rhodes. Sammy Callum with a 71 performance. Yes, 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 yes. This Moxley and Callahan match is going to be great. I am very excited about that. So the thing is, maybe what we do is we hold... Maybe... Because I was kind of considering giving MJF the title, the TNT title. But maybe the thing is we hold back and we once Callahan's done his feud with Mox, we just send him straight off to Cody and have him take that TNT title off Cody. I don't think that's a bad idea, to be honest. I'll see. We'll see. We'll see going forwards what's going to be the what's going to work out best. But maybe that's what we do. And please don't let this save die. These saves so often die. Seventy nine. Thank goodness it did not die. Oh, very nice indeed. Post match, Sammy Callahan does a little does a promo and beats down Dustin Rhodes. Continues to beat him to nothing, completely obliterating him. And John Moxley coming out. After, well, not after it, during it, 
He's not going to miss the entire brawl. Gets down drawing it, saving Dustin Rhodes from being completely pilmanized by Sammy Callahan. And now we're going to our main event. A bit of a teaser for what we're going to get at AEW Sunrise. Please let this be all right. 78. Cool. It could have been better, but I'm. it's all right. It's all right. It really shows a difference in quality when you look at this. All of the elite boys over an 80. And sure, I know popularity matters. But all the elite boys over an 80. Kenny with an 88. The Young Bucks, 85 and 80. And then you look at how Uncaged did. 51, 54, 57. Not great for those guys. Like Mike Bennett did well. I'll give that for Mike Bennett. But Anderson and Gallows, a real disappointment. Real disappointment. It's a shame. Like Connor's getting a fifty-one. And like he's um, um, what's it called? He is declining, I think, as well. Let me just double check. He has an awful gimmick, so I need to change the gimmick. Okay, none of them are declining. I thought they were declining as well. So ignore what it says here. He did not submit Luke Gallows after blatantly cheating. That was not what happened. Hangman Page came out and, and distracted to allow the Elite to get the victory. So let's see what we've got overall. Should be a good show. 79. I'm happy with that. That is a very nice show indeed. Our promos were great. We had some really good matches on this one. I'm very happy with how that one went. Yeah. As we're back on the correct foot after some perhaps a week or weeks of Dynamite. We are back towards AW Sunrise. And we are back let's see how we did in terms of our viewing figures for this week's dynamite we got 528,000 viewers this week still kind of on par with where we've been so far i'm not going to complain too much about that let's hope we've beaten nxt this week we have beaten nxt this week nxt had a real dud of a show that was not a good show for nxt only one 73 and the rest of it well not great in the slightest even an interview with Triple H. They've gotten over their Triple H bias. So I want to see. I'm going to have a look at how some of my guys that are coming in are doing. I Johnny got going getting a 68 is great. They kill him. They bury him. Oh, that's going to take so much pop off him. I hate you when the game does this. No, don't do this. See, so yeah, with Johnny coming in. I don't know if I've said that before. Oh, that makes me sad. That's going to knock some popularity points off him, you'd imagine. Let's have a look, see if he has tracks. It's still 60 60. I hope he stays at that. That's why I need him to stay up. And let's check our brand new signee, which is on this list as well Dakota Kai, who is coming in. Evie, for the 49 performance, I'm happy with that. It's not too bad because she's only got a 40 pop, but she's got some really nice um, skills. So I'm very happy with having Evie coming into the roster. Yep, we beat NXT though this way, which is very nice indeed. And thank you. Let me have one second before we go. Let's double check. When is Sunrise? Sunrise is in nine days. So next week will be the go home show for AEW Sunrise. Make sure to come and check it out next week. Thank you very much for watching, and we will see you next time. <laughs>